On today's show, ECCI Force Feedback Racing Wheel, iRacing Paddock, and Top Sim Cars. This show is sponsored by Sim Raceway. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm your host, Jessica Lopez. And I'm Sean Cole. And this is episode 64. And we're going to start off today by showing you guys this book. It's The iRacing Paddock by Ray Bryden. And it's a book, it's a beginner's guide to road racing on iRacing.com. Now, I've been thinking about our show, and we got this in, and I'm still trying to figure out how do I play a book. It's a beginner's guide to road racing. Ah, oh, it's going to make me a better sim racer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, I've read through it quite a bit. I think it's more than a beginner's guide. I mean, if you checked out Sim Racer 101, that was kind of a beginner's guide, but it, it was lacking in content, to be honest with you. This is extremely thorough. Retails for $14.99, and Sean and Darren put it on our rev scale, which is our 1 to 10 scale, and let's see what they thought. We've done Sim Racer 101. We've done some tech tips. I mean, we're always talking about getting in the mindset of, well, a beginner Sim Racer. Yeah, we also did Sim Racer 102. 102. Yeah, and we actually remember the, the tip you did on uh, no distractions? Right, right. Yeah, that's so, definitely a beginner type tip. But kind of all of this brought into one book yeah, by this, Ray the, Bryden. Yeah, this definitely wraps it all up, all up into one. I Racing Paddock by Ray Bryden. And it's a beginner's guide to road racing, mainly on iRacing. But right. it definitely encompasses a lot more than, yeah. just, than just road racing. I mean, it's a beginner's guide to sim racing, really, too, on a PC. Absolutely. And he talks about uh, when he was getting involved in sim racing. Maybe we should talk about Ray a little bit. Yeah, why don't <laughs> we? Uh, Ray, from the sound of it, is about our age, it seems. Yeah. Um, and he grew up in the 80s in Canada uh -huh. um, in a big family. In the Villanova era of racing. Yeah, exactly. And that's what he mentioned. And his dad and brothers were, were all into, uh, into racing, particularly F1. Right. So that sounds like where he got his road racing roots. Yeah. And um, been a gamer forever. Uh, had an Atari pole position. He said he played <laughs> right. a ton of that. And actually you got had it. this one. Yeah. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of the one that actually got me into sim racing, Indianapolis 500, he had this. He said he raced this when he went to, to college. Right. And uh, he's actually a meta, metallurgical engineer. And that's what he went to school for, at least. Pretty fancy. PhD. Yeah, yeah PhD. So he had <laughs> finished his PhD in that. Um, so anyway, he's married, kids, stopped sim racing in 2002, and then came back when he saw John Henry on Wind Tunnel. Right. Talking about iRacing and I thought, you know what, well. I think it's, he said his kids have grown to a point now where he could get back into his hobby. And <laughs> he dove in head first, man. That, he got right back sure. into it. I think the moral of the story, though, is that his, his story is very similar to a lot of us who've been around for a long time in and out of sim racing and always looking for that something that made it easy to jump back into it. And I think that's kind of how this book came to be. Yeah, exactly how it, he, he actually got the, the To Win series right, by uh, Carol, by Carol Smith. Smith, yeah, and he said that 70% 70 70 applied to what he was trying to do, but that other 30% was missing, so yeah. he looked for some sim racing books, there really wasn't one. So yeah, we've, we've referred to those books as well, and I agree with that 70%, you know, they're old books and they're not about sim racing, so making a Carol Smith type book, Beginner's Guide or iRacing Paddock is... Uh, what we're looking at here and it, it's just it's exactly that i mean and it's definitely being marketed as an i racing beginner's guide but 70 percent of this is going to apply to anybody getting into sim racing regardless it's even a road racing guide but regardless of what you're going what sim what your discipline 70 percent of this is going to apply to the beginner and be great information for them yeah, exactly. A little bit more um, as far as how Ray got this going, um, and he's strictly a road racer like we mentioned. Uh, and anyway, he had created a draft of this, sent it to Tony Gardner, uh, president of iRacing, and asked their permission to use screenshots and uh, you know unrestricted mention about iRacing, and they were very receptive right. and, and thankful, actually. Um, and then he sent it to David Phillips, who's their editor of In Racing News. Right. And, now, actually, Ray writes for In Racing News. He writes tech tips for In Racing News. You, you guys may have seen him, but, and then he wrote iRacing Paddock. 
And, and it's a great read. Uh, what I like oh, about it... Oh, it's an awesome read. I've been able to stop reading it. It's quick, and it's really thorough. So again, a beginner's guide. I mean, he starts off and he tells you what kind of computer you're going to need, the, the parts of the computer you're going to need. All the to, hardware. Where to spend your money on the computer, all the hardware you need, and how to set it up. I mean, he doesn't downplay any of that, and that's before you even get to the on-the-track stuff. And again, this doesn't apply just to iRacing. I mean, you need, if you wanted to get into R-Factor or oval racing, you know, this isn't just for road racing. You wanted to get into oval racing in yeah. Arca Sim Racing or even NASCAR 2003. Yep. All, a lot of this setup stuff applies. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff like, like we talked about, Sean had, did a tip on, you know, blocking out distractions. Yep. And Ray has included that as well. You know, yeah. make sure that all your distractions are blocked out, that you set aside certain time, you know, times of the day that you're going to race yeah. and, and get prepared. Yeah, and don't get disturbed and, and, and treat it like a real race. I mean, I th that's what I took from this book constantly was the way he referred to back on the track and being in the mindset of a race car driver and and you know thinking about your competition and you know thinking about what you do while you're out there constantly and that includes you know mental preparation in the beginning yep so that's pretty much you know in a nutshell that's what this is about we highly recommend it rev scale yeah what do oh, you think oh it, you know it's inexpensive it's 1439 1439 on amazon.com so uh for a beginner absolutely a 10. yep for the veteran sim racer i think it's a good read it's fun it's nice to have around the house so i'd still give it a very high rating but if you're a beginner out there this is a, this is like a must-have this the, is going to take you to the point of uh i've never done this before to a competent eye racer you know We've got the, the spec Ford here at Lime Rock and Summit. Summit, sorry. And you know, this book prepares you to get from your couch to out there with these guys. Yeah, some of the things it, it, it includes besides just setting up for your PC. It, again, it's a it's a beginner's guide to road racing on iRacing.com. So it basically takes you from the Salsas up to the Skip Barber, uh, the F two thousand car. And it offers setup guides, yep. uh, driving guides. Rookie car guides. It shows you all the specs of all four of these cars yeah. in detail. Uh, track guides, so all the tracks that you're going to race as a rookie in iRacing. So it gives you, you know, all the corners. You know, he, he has some, you know, pretty rudimentary drawings that he did himself, but it, it tells a story. It I mean, makes it, a point, yeah. It does, exactly. It makes it easy to understand as well. Also included in the back of the book is the entire sporting code, the iRacing sporting code, which right. is a must read for any new iRacers. Definitely. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, again, 1439, you can get it right from our site at insidesimracing.tv. We have a banner on our front page. Yep. Take you right to it. You can purchase it right through our Amazon store. Uh, I'd like to thank Ray for sending us a couple copies. Actually, there's also, I'd like to mention, a Ford by Dave Cameron there, our was, good buddy, and uh, which is really cool. There's but, a lot of good humor in this book, too. I constantly find myself uh, laughing or chuckling. He's got a very nice writing style. It's easy to read. And you know what? One last thing I'd like to say in closing. As a veteran sim racer, I've been around just as long as Ray, and I took, I've, I got some stuff out of this. Mm -hmm. You know, even about iRacing, about like, for instance, really quick, uh, audio. You know, setting up your audio for chat, voice chat, on a separate sound card or system versus right. your main, so it, it keeps the, the sound separate. So right. just stuff like that, and just stuff you just, you haven't thought, I haven't thought about in a while, yeah, so. Yeah, definitely. Highly recommend it. Yeah, and so, uh, anyway, check that out, and, that kind of takes us to a whole other point. I mean, now that you've uh, read this book and you've got to become a sim racer, you're probably looking for some sort of a league to run in, huh? Yeah, and if you're not going for the pro series or you can't get there yet, or you just want to run in a league environment, uh, and we're going to start talking more about leagues. We've kind of let leagues, um, we've neglected leagues, I should say sure. here. We haven't really talked much about league racing, and that's the core of sim racing. Absolutely, but it's racing season. I it mean, is it racing is. season. If you want to know, we're going to start telling you what some of the leagues out there are. Uh, this week, SSCA, the league that I actually started back in 1995 off of Hawaii, uh, the, which was the multiplayer off of NASCAR 1 that Papyrus created, which was right. the dawn of sim racing, really, on, online sim racing. And SSCA had been around forever. Ever since then, off and on, I, I'd had it uh, running until we started the show. Right. We ran some endurance <laughs> races, and then we just got so busy with the show that we had it, SSCA pretty much sat dormant. Yeah. A that's in steps Alex Uliri, an old friend of mine. Um, you guys may recognize him. iRacers Resource, him and PJ Lossy right. um, have that site. And now they, they approached me, I don't know, about three, four months ago about 
if they could take over SSCA or rejuvenate SSCA for, for some racing on iRacing. And I said, absolutely. Uh, so they've got it up and running. We got a quick little promo video, sscarace.com. Check it out. So even if you guys are not iRacers and you're just getting into sim racing on the PC, this is a great book to start out. And you can visit our website, InsideSimRacing.tv, to purchase the book. We have a banner on our front page. Yeah, the banner looks just like the book. So $14.99. Next up, we're going to go on over to our top simulation cars of all time. That's it's right. our 19th installment. 19th installment. <laughs> we have cars number 41 and 42. I cannot believe we're still doing this. No. And we're still getting a lot of requests for cars to put on our on this segment. And that's why we're still doing it. I think when we first brainstormed it, we imagined 10 cars, but the emails roll in. So 41, 42, here they come. Here they come. Top simulation cars of all time, sponsored by simraceway.com. Home of the one-click install. All right, top sim cars of all time, number 19? 19, this is the 19th one, yes. 41st and 42nd <laughs> cars. Right. And we've got the BMW 320i E21, which we're not sure which year this particular model's from, but from 77 to 83, I think. This is considered a Group 5 racing bmw another one of those ones from my memory of racing i just i always love this body shape i mean i've always been a bmw fan but then like this super winged out version of the 320 that i grew up as a kid seeing you know pretty cool the flying brick it was nicknamed <laughs> which was really cool we just read that in uh, in wiki but um 300 horsepower two yeah. liter which is a lot of horsepower for a little motor and, and they're really really rpm driven i mean 10,000 rpm Thing screams it, it's like not like a normal street street car at all i mean this thing's ferocious in that department it is and uh oh Demazis are the guys that did this you can get right. this mod at r factor central this is for r factor by the way yeah uh you can get it for r factor it's a highly rated mod and one of my favorites, I love this mod, and definitely got to get real feel. Took me some time to dial in the real feel settings. It never really got them exactly where I wanted them, but... It, it did take some work, and it played a big role in what we thought of the car. So again, when we're comparing these, we're getting them dialed in to make sure we're feeling it good. And once you got it dialed in, this car was very drivable and felt good. Good force feedback even. I mean, I'll give a couple scores while we're going. I mean, uh, force feedback, eight and a half out of 10. So that's a good score. Let's go back. Physics, 18. Sounds, 13 and a half. Great yeah. sounds on this mod. Yeah. Nine and a half models, beautiful models. Match right up with the, the paints. Just got the paint skin. Five. <laughs> I mean, just a ton of them. Kind of the historic look. You're going to notice or, or, or remember a lot of those paint schemes as well. Uh, the other thing that for me was the cockpit. Uh, we, were, we were laughing about how they had the gauges marked in German, uh, but the gauges are beautiful. You had the telltale on the RPM. The That's tack. one of the first times I've seen that in, in a mod. I, I, we were all sitting here, myself, <laughs> Sean, and Tommy, we were sitting here running laps in it, and I said, did this thing, did you guys know this had a telltale? And they said, no. <laughs> and sure enough, there's a telltale on the tack, which is really cool. Yeah. So. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous car. I, I mean, I just, I love the car in real life and seeing uh, when I have a favorite car of mine and I get to see a great representation of it in a sim, that, that does a lot for me. So, uh, beautiful models, uh, this is nine one and a half, ten. Few, this is one of the few times now that Sean has outranked me in a car <laughs> in the last couple of months. And Sean overall gave it a 90.5. Yep. And I gave it an 89. Total 89.8, which puts it fifth. Fifth. Fifth on the list. So this thing cracks the top five, yeah. definitely deserves it. And if you're into R Factor, go get this one at R Factor Central for sure. You're gonna you're gonna love the car, I, I guarantee it. Next up, we have the new, brand new 
And we've only been driving this thing for a couple days now. Yeah, but it's been like non-stop for a couple days. Ford Falcon V8 supercar <laughs> from iRacing. They just released it. This is like the stock car of Australia, New Zealand, well, a whole region down there. That's like a touring car. Yeah. Like, but, uh... Well, when I think of stock cars or what NASCAR even used to be, it was like taking a real production car and turning it into a race car. And that's what these are. And they're heavy and they drive like that. Almost 3,000 pounds, 630 something horsepower. I mean, yeah. just crazy amount of horsepower. <laughs> um, and a ton of fun to drive. They are. Uh, it almost drives like a drift car or a rally car. And this is on a road surface. It's like the rear end is always live and very collectible. Uh, we joke yes. about uh, performance cars that we've driven in real life and the way the rear end is collectible and it's not that hard to keep it under control. This car drives like that. Yep. Yeah, it's it's now my favorite car in iRacing, no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, now let's just go. Let's just start going over the scores. Uh, these scores are high, and I want to give a lot of them to make sure people really pay attention and see. Uh, yeah, I'd like to point about. some things out to <laughs> some people that may not pay attention to everything that we talk about here. We get to that score at the end by adding up all 10 categories. <laughs> it's not like we just go, hmm, uh, yeah, I'm going to give this car an 89. That's not how it works, guys. These cars go through 10 different categories. Yeah. And again, I'm going to mention them to you because some of you may not be paying attention. <laughs> Physics, sounds, models, cockpit, fun factor, immersive, force feedback realism, damage, skins, and default set. That all totaled makes the combined score of 100. So what you may not think is the best sim car, or what you think is the best sim car of all time, or what you think is the best sim car, may not rank up on the scale. Even, uh, you know, and yeah. why don't you take this scale and, and do them yourselves, to, I, just to, to keep up with us here. I'd and, like a lot of people to do more of that. I mean, I think a lot of people get confused by one category at a time, whether it be physics, and want to say, oh, how can anything with not the best physics not be the best sim car? Well, it's the other bunch of categories. Um, anyway, this car, the Ford Falcon, did very well in all the categories. So. Physics, we both said it. This is one of our favorite cars ever. Actually, it didn't do well in one category. It did so-so, right above our 50% line, but it was only a five-point category, and that's in damage. Um, Sean gave it a three and a half, and I gave it a three. So it's about yeah. three and a quarter in damage. Not a lot of visual damage that was uh, is, is cool as some other sims. Good physical damage Great in terms of what you damage. feel in the wheel and driving, but uh, visually it's just a lot to be left, uh, to be desired. But let's go back to the beginning of our scale, 19.3 in physics. That's incredible. Sounds, 13.8 out of 15. We had a YouTube video that we were playing side by side with us driving. You couldn't tell them apart in looks or sound, which yep. also carries over to cockpit. Let's go back to sounds really quick. iRacing has cranked up the sounds in this car. Yeah, this is the fact, latest build. This car is so loud, we could hear it in the next room over with the doors shut. Absolutely. Rumbling, you know, with the butt kicker. I had to turn the butt kicker down a little yep. bit on this one. So yep. it's not where I have to turn everything full crank now. I mean, it's... It's loud. And that's been the Achilles heel of a lot of iRacing cars. So, yep. so a big score there for this car. Uh, models nine and a half, cockpit nine and a quarter out of 10. For me, I'm gonna tell, talk about fun factor immersive force feedback. I gave it a 10 across all three categories. Outside of a couple of dirt type games, this is the best force feedback I felt. It is. I gave it. I also gave it a ten in Fun Factor, so I got a ten overall in Fun Factor. I just have a blast, and it's again, this is personal preference. I mean, Don and I love driving these V8s, so we gave it a ten. Yeah. I just talked to, you know, we just had Ron Black on the show. Yep. And I just talked to him on the phone. How'd you like the V8? And Ron's like, ah, it drives like a bus, man. The thing doesn't <laughs> break. I don't like it. And, <laughs> Ron loves the Lotus. Right. Ron is a big time open wheeler guy, so now he so he didn't really like this car as much as we did. I, I guarantee he wouldn't give it a 10 in fun factor, but that's uh, our opinion. Yeah, now I've also been in rooms, this is a very popular car all of a sudden, and I've seen, you know, hundreds of people talking about the love for this car. Everyone's coming out in, in grand fashion. You have to enjoy enjoy driving a car yeah. loose. I mean, because it's and and you gotta enjoy driving, because I mean you got to brake early. <laughs> you got to be careful on the throttle. So. Tear up them tires, too. I, I yep. roasted my right fronts and was useless at the end of the race. Uh, skins. I'm five. giving my racing a five. Everybody has a unique skin opportunity. Colors, it's super easy. Lots they, of different templates. Lots of cool decals. Uh, really cool decals in their game. And you can paint your own. 
and have, you know, like through train paints or something like yeah. that, you can have your own paint scheme. So, so. great for league aspect. Default set, five. I mean, five. it's not you're not going to be the fastest out there with it, but it gets you around the track yeah, and, and it's it stable. Easy to handle. So combined total, that's a 94 point. Eight, everyone. Sean outscored me again. He gave it a 95. I gave it 95. a 94 and a half. Um, 94 point. We have a new top sim car. Three weeks in a row, three shows in a row. Pretty new top sim cars. Pretty amazing. I, I this is going to be a hard score to beat. 95 is. I mean, that's near perfection. That's getting. I mean, and when we talk perfection, we're talking in today's world, guys. I mean, tomorrow, who knows? What you know what's funny? Going to be about this now. We were showing, everybody thought, oh, these guys are biased. You know, they're only putting our factor top five cars are all our factor cars. Now it's going to be funny is that all the R Factor guys are going to be saying, oh, <laughs> they're, uh, they're biased for iRacing, blah, 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 whatever. It's our opinion. You guys don't like it. If you don't like Sorry. it. Sorry. Score it yourselves. Score it. Please tell us. I'd love put to. Put it in our forums. We'll put your scores on the show. We'll talk about it here. Yeah. I mean, it's just this our opinions, what we feel. Absolutely. This isn't like the top sim car list of all time. This is Sean and, and Sean, Darren. Yeah, Sean <laughs> and Darren's top sim car list, and I guarantee – most people are going to enjoy driving most of these cars in the top 10. They're a blast. They're all a blast. You know, and regardless of your preference, I don't think anyone's going to argue that everything in the top 10, top 20 does, deserve to be there, regardless of Sims. So, I mean, and we, everybody can play favorites, but ultimately, they're all great This cars. is our now our new top Sim car, our favorite car. We're going to be racing yeah. a season in this and I racing. So Yeah, I'm anyway. putting a whole season in. So, I mean, that, there you go. My I always favorite say that. I never car. do it, but I'm going to try. <laughs> anyway, top Sim car number 19. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one. All right, guys, time for my favorite part of the show. We have our top story, and today we have some pretty exciting <laughs> to say accessories. The least. <laughs> That's right. We have a wheel by ECCI. That's Extreme Competition Controls Inc., or Incorporated, anybody who doesn't know, and that makes it my favorite favorite time of the show as well. And they've been around for about 15 years. The last wheel that they have came out with was the Trackstar 6000 and that retailed for about 1600 bucks. Best wheel on the market. Yeah. No force feedback. Nope. But still very sought after and, and hard to get your hands on. And you've actually said you've never seen one other than at a trade show. Yeah. That's what it takes to get one sometimes. Many people have never seen the wheels by ECCI. We have their newest version, the 7000. This one comes with force feedback and it retails for $25.99. Ouch. But you know, you're combining force feedback with one of the greatest wheel companies who, who I never thought they'd make a force feedback wheel. So it sounds like a good price for such a fine wheel. We were lucky enough to get one on the show. One of Darren's closest and longtime friends, Ron Black, ordered the wheel and we're going to unveil it and assemble it here on the show. Yeah, kind of a bonus. Ron Black, a veteran sim racer, goes back as far as Darren is, and I do in sim racing years. So you get to meet another real well-known sim racer and see one of the greatest wheels on earth. We're excited about it and we're excited to share this with you guys. So here's our top story of the day. All right, here I am with Good friend of mine, Ron Black. Actually, Ron, you've been sim racing about as long as I have. Haven't you? What, about 15, 15 yeah. years or so? Yeah, pretty much. You were on Hawaii, weren't you? Oh, actually, yeah. Actually, yeah, you were on Hawaii. <laughs> Ron, actually, I, have, I think I had my very first multiplayer race against Ron. I think, Ron, you actually took me out in the, in the kink. Really? Talladega. I don't remember that. Well, I think you won the race. I think we were both battling for that. Remember the kink at Talladega? Yeah. You, you had to lift for it back in NASCAR 1? Yeah. So anyway, Ron's been doing this as long as I have, and you, you've had an ECCI for a long time too, haven't you? Just a standard ECCI wheel. Yeah, I have three ECCI wheels. Oh, at really? Home, actually. Oh, wow. I had their first uh, one from like 1996 or 7. Then I got the uh, CDS 2000, and now I have the CDS 6000 that I drive currently. Oh, nice. So you were back from the beginning with me, and then, so 96, that was pretty much right after Hawaii opened up. Yeah, yeah. So you've had an ECCI that long, and then you took a break from sim racing right around NASCAR 2002? Yeah, yeah, about in the year 2003, um, I stepped away for a few years, started doing you know, some other gaming, but now I'm back. Yeah, and you're back, and, and I've been trying to push force feedback on you for, since you've come back. Yes, you have. And you've tested it here and there. You've been waiting for a high-end wheel. And you, you're friends with the guys from ECCI. Weren't you sponsored by ECCI a while back? Or you've had yeah. a good relationship with these guys for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so he's been bugging these guys for a long time. When are you going to come out with force feedback? And when you do, I want the first one. Well, we got it sitting right here. We're going to unbox it. Ron was 
kind enough to bring this to us, drove a couple hours from where he lives close to the studio here, and brought us, he hasn't even opened it up, so he hasn't even seen it yet. So I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to try it too. So we're going to unbox this, show you what it's all about, and then after that we're going to set it up and uh, turn some laps. Sounds Sound good? good? Yeah. Right on. All right, well, you've seen us unbox this. This is our new ray gun here that we have for the show. Our force feedback ray gun, no, seriously. It doesn't look like a wheel. Well, this looks like a wheel, but the rest of the me mechanism does not resemble a wheel. No, it doesn't. But man, this definitely is a wheel. I, I will, I'll just say right now, this is the best force feedback wheel I've ever tried. Hands down, and we had the Frex on the show a while ago, which I would say is one of its, certainly one of its rival wheels. And this just seems to move a lot smoother yep. and seems to be a lot stronger. Uh, it's a bit more expensive as well, so I mean, sometimes you get what you pay for. You do get what you pay for. You know, ECCI has always been known for, for high quality stuff, and they definitely didn't skimp on this thing. No. I mean, I've, I've never actually even really held one. I mean, I've driven a couple of them, um, but man, this thing. I, I don't, what does it weigh? 30, 40 pounds? <laughs> Easily. And it's a work of art. I mean, so anybody who's out there who's like a, a, an engineer type or into metal, you're going to love this wheel just on that level. The, 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 the mechanics of it, the precision of it, just the whole machining aspect. I mean, it's, it's, it's a work of art for people who like that. Yeah, the way the, the paddles shift and click, uh, just everything is so positive. You know, we're trying to, we're all trying to de define Ron, myself, and, and Sean, like, just how this thing feels like compared to a G27. And, and like we were just running the G27 in comparison. And it, it's just so much more positive and it's just a totally different feel. I, I, I agree. Mean, it, it's night and day comparison. I agree. All other wheels, and I, for me, I really do mean the word all other wheels that I've held in my hand, in some way, shape or form, I could torque the wheel. And I'm not talking just spin it, I'm talking torque, flex it. There is no such animal in this wheel. Uh, it spins, uh, but it does not flex, torque, or any backlash. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, 900 degrees of rotation. Uh, not adjustable at all. It, yeah. It's um, basically how you calibrate it, and it just seems like it just keeps going to 900. So iRacing, it seems you can short calibrate it, but then there's no stop. Uh, right. So 900 seems the only way to do it. We, Honestly, there was no instructions to say that you could uh, calibrate it down to say 270 or something, but we just calibrated 900 Rand I racing that way. Uh, honestly, in our factor with it like that, it was just kind of funky. I, I think maybe using a um, DI view or some kind of yeah. program to, to stop, uh, it, it, it wouldn't even be a, a lock. It would just be, you know, it stop the uh, Just the to get rotation. that linearity in order so that you can feel like you have about 270 or 340 degree yeah, rotation. Or maybe you can adjust it inside, you know, yeah. the I and I. But, Anyway, this thing's amazing. Uh, something for me, a lot of times when I switch from wheel to wheel, and we try a lot of wheels here, I find that it takes me an adjustment period to get used to the wheel. This wheel, I just immediately felt naturally at home with. 
Yep. Uh, the weight balance of the car can be felt better than anything I've ever felt. The, the rumble strips weren't as alive as, as I was hoping for, but just that overall force feedback and the way the car linked to the wheel was natural. Yep. Uh, I, we're using that natural word a lot lately, and you know, electronics is sort of a funny word to bring the word natural, but I think that really describes the way it feels when you get into the car. Yep, so like we mentioned, $25.99. Uh, it's pretty much like a special order. They don't have these on the <laughs> shelf waiting to be shipped out from what I understand. No, and this is like, one of the very, very, very first. Uh, by the way, Andy and, and John, if you guys are watching this at ECCI, we would love to have one of these on our set here. So feel free yeah. to send us another one so we could really test it out. Probably but. sell a lot of wheels seeing us use them all the time. <laughs> I don't know about that at this price, but anyway, they are amazing. You know, if you can afford one, if you're looking to get a high-end wheel, um, I would definitely go. You know, and this is an American built here. I would yeah. go with this over a, a Frex any day of the week. I I've definitely, I've, we've both tested Frex. Um, significantly. Yeah. I mean, I've got a lot of miles on Frex in the, in the CXC simulator, and this thing blows it away. Yeah. I yeah. love the Frex wheel. I do too. But, it's a great wheel. But this wheel I'm infatuated with. I, I, it's beyond love. It's, it's a, a must-have for me, uh, a little out of my price range, unfortunately. Yep. So that's going to do it. Uh, we're not going to rate it. Um, I mean... I'll rate it. Yeah. This thing's awesome. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 10 out of 10. I mean, it, it's the best you can get. Yeah. You know, if you want a, a Ferrari for a wheel, I mean, this is it right here. Yeah, yeah. So There's nothing finer. That's going to do it. ECCI, I think, what is this, a track star? We're not even sure. 7,000 yeah. we know is the part number for sure. But if you go to the website, you're not even going to see it there. So nope. you better inquire with them directly. So hope you enjoyed our little look at it. Preview, review, whatever you want to call it. Thanks to Ron Black for uh, bringing this to us and letting us enjoy it. Ron didn't even drive it for the first couple hours. He finally got to, to, to drive it later. He said he's going to be able to drive it forever. But thank you, Ron, for, <laughs> he, for bringing this to us. This I think was, he brought it really by cool. to ruin sim racing for us, basically. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Thanks, Ron, Nothing for ruining it for us. Nothing to be the same ever again. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Darren, Sean, hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, guys, but the end of our show has come. Sad but true. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the ECCI 7000. I thoroughly enjoyed it right until the moment where Ron grabbed it, put it in a box, and left the building. But we would like <laughs> to thank Ron for bringing the will, or Absolutely. actually having us unveil the will here on our show, and for all of you guys out there. That was amazing and very lucky and generous. You know, generous of Ron and lucky for us. Yeah. Sean joked that if he had the will, he would have locked himself in the closet. Yes. So. It would be all thank mine until I'm done. for sharing that with us. On our up and coming episode, we'll feature these club sport pedals here in this beautiful color. This, these are very nice. Yeah, it's kind of an orangish, uh, bronzish color. And we've showed these on the show before, but we've never reviewed them. No, and they were silver when we showed them. Now we got five different color kits. And we're going to do the full review of the club sport pedals. So. And we'll have IndyCar driver Townsend Bell on the next show. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching us on YouTube and comment, rate the show. Yep. And visit our website, InsideSimRacing.tv. We have lots of forums and voting going on over there. Yeah, all sorts. And we have our Sim Mart where you can purchase almost everything we have on the show, including the book that uh, we had on, featured on the show earlier today. Yeah, iRacing Paddock. And that's a great way to support the show, going to the Sim Mart and buying products. It's an Amazon store, but it helps us out. And we don't want donations, but you buy things there and it helps us out. That's right. Thank you guys for joining us. That's going to wrap it up. Checker flag is out, and so are we. I'm writing you right now. I'll say it right now. Oh, you're looking at my slippers? Yeah. <laughs>